Hi everybody, I'm Bobby Barker and today I want to show you how to make the Aero Poncho. Let me give you a little look at it here and I'll show you some pictures right here. I'm going to be using Yarnspirations Caron Cloud Cakes. This is a worsted weight yarn. And let me just say that if you can't find this particular type of yarn, it's not a problem. You are free to use any worsted weight yarn that you have available in your area. And this is a, again, a medium or a worsted weight or a number four. And let's look some of the at some of the stats. This is 8.5 ounces or 240 grams, 760 yards per cake. The number of cakes that I used is listed across the bottom of your screen. And this is 100% polyester. And again, feel free to substitute any worsted weight yarn of your choice for this particular design. So by using a size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook and as always I'm recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. Before I begin let me just say something about this color changing yarn. There is just one and a half yards of the blue and since I really want to keep this color scheme as um, as nice as I can I'm going to go ahead and trim this part until I get to the green because I will have many yards of the green before the color changes. In that way, we don't have just a teeny hint of blue um, at the beginning and then it changed suddenly. So anyway, don't feel like you have to use every inch of the yarn as it comes off of the cakes. Feel free to manipulate it as you would like. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we are going to chain a starting chain of 71 chains. For row one, we're going to start in the second chain from hook and we are going to work a single crochet in that stitch and a single crochet in each of the chains all the way across the row. So go ahead and work that row of single crochet at the end of this row you should have a total of 70 single crochets. And let me also say that for those of you who want to make your panels wider all you need to do is add multiples of four but I do caution you about making it too wide because that may make it difficult for the ratio of when you put these panels together. But again, if you want to make these panels wider, just add multiples of four. To begin row two, we're going to turn, chain two. We're going to work a double crochet in that very first stitch. After that first double crochet, we're going to prepare to work a treble crochet. We're going to skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and in that fourth stitch, we work that treble crochet. Now working behind this stitch, you can even pull it back like so, and we're going to work in those three stitches that we just skipped, and we're going to work double crochets. So treble crochet for the first stitch, and then the three stitches that were worked behind are double crochets. And you see what that looks like right there. Let's do that again. Prepare for that treble. Skip the next three stitches. One, two, three. Treble crochet in that next stitch. Working behind the treble crochet, we're going to work double crochets in each of those three stitches that were skipped. One, two, and three. And you get an idea of what this looks like. 
So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. After working this all the way across the row, you should have one stitch left and we're going to work a double crochet in that last stitch. Let's take a look at the row. You should have 17 arrows started on this row. All right, let's go ahead on to row number three. We're going to chain two. We're going to work a double crochet in that first stitch. Skip the next three stitches, which are those double crochets, one, two, three, and in the top of the treble crochet, which is right here, it should be, you can see from the other side, it's the top of that treble. We're going to work a treble crochet. Now, this is the back side facing, so working in front of that treble crochet, we're going to double crochet in each of the three stitches that we just skipped. I'm going to do that again for you. Skip the next three stitches, which are double crochets, one, two, three, and in the next stitch, which should be a treble, and you can always look at the back side to confirm that, yes, that's the top of that treble. We work a treble crochet, working in front of that treble, we work double crochets in each of those three stitches that we skipped. So let's look at it from the back side, which is the side that's facing us, and this is what it should look like from the front side. You can see the arrows forming just like that. So go ahead and work row three all the way across and I'll show you how this ends. After working this all the way across, we're going to work a double crochet in that last stitch. This is the back side and let's take a look at these beautiful arrows again on the front side. Okay, so you basically have all of the stitch work needed to complete each panel. You're going to be making two panels and you're going to work rows two and three of the arrow stitch over and over again until the panel measures the length that is shown at the bottom of the screen there. Okay. And if you decided to make your panels wider, then you may need to make the panels a little bit longer in proportion. And um, so let's go ahead and we're going to work this. And once I'm done with the panel, we will work a perimeter round and I'll show you how to do that. I've just completed the first panel and let me show you how these colors have progressed. This panel is approximately 17 inches wide and 36 inches long. Now I'm going to show you how to go on to the perimeter round, but before we do that, let me talk a little bit about the colors and the colorways and how you want this to continue. I've decided that I like the dominant blue in this particular colorway and I want to use that blue yarn to go around the perimeter round. Okay, now here is here is another spool. Let me go ahead and bring this up. My next cake of yarn. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to control this color way a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll these colors off of the cake. I'm going to just set them aside and then I'm going to rejoin with the blue color as I work the perimeter round. Again, you don't have to do this. You can just let the next color that's coming um, be the next color, but I, I just want to be a little more of a designer and control this. Okay, so after I do the perimeter round with the blue, I'm going to again make a separate ball and roll the rest of the blue off because then I will begin my second panel using the green and I'll have just enough green. I'll have the exact same amount with which I started the first panel. 
just just to remind you the first color I started with was down here so that I know that assuming that this yarn in this cake is is not joined by a, a knot from the factory somewhere hopefully that's not the case um, then this panel using this second cake of yarn will look the same as the first panel that I completed here. Now, again, you don't have to do it this way. You can just make this project totally random and, and that would be fine. You can even use different, um, you know, different brands of yarn. And I, I think this will look great either way. I, I think even a solid color would look beautiful with this, this particular arrow stitch. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and roll this yarn off like I just explained, and I will rejoin if I need to. If I run out of my blue, I'm going to rejoin with the same color from another of uh, another one of these. Okay, so now we are ready to begin the perimeter round, and as you can see, I still am using the yarn that is connected. Again, if you want to change the color for the perimeter round, which is just going to be a row, actually a round, of single crochets, then you can go ahead and fasten off and connect the new yarn. But since I'm not having to do that right now, I'm just going to chain one and I'm going to turn to work along the row ends. And just for the record, I'm not going to give you the number of rows that I worked because quite frankly, it is irrelevant. The more important stat that you need to know is this is 36 inches long or approximately and that's without stretching it that's laying it flat on a flat surface um, it's very 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 important that you measure at this point and again the length the actual dimensions are far more important than the number of rows okay so let's go forward with the perimeter round i'm going to chain one and we're going to turn and the goal working along the row ends is to work two single crochets for every row end. So for every arrow that you see here, you should have four single crochets. Let me go ahead and work that with you. So we have one, two single crochets for that first row end, and then you're gonna do that again. One, two, so two on the next row end. So if you look at the arrow itself, you should count one, two, three, four single crochets. All right, so I'm just gonna work this all the way across. And do make sure that as you work these across that these single crochets are neither pulled too tightly or too loose. In other words, you don't want your work, you know, pulling in if the stitches are too tight and you certainly don't want them kind of wavy on the edge. It should be nice and even just like this. After working this all the way across the row ends, we get to that single crochet row and go ahead and work a corner, which is a single crochet, chain two, and then a single crochet worked into that same space. And then now we are going to work over the remainder of that turning chain or actually the starting chain. So go ahead and single crochet in each stitch across. And if you're not sure where the stitches are, you can look at the back side of the single crochet right there and just work that single crochet over those two strands left from that starting chain. So we're going to do that all the way across and let me just give you the rest of the directions. When we finish that, we will do another. When we work the last stitch here, we'll work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that spot and then again work the single crochets, two single crochets per row end as you go down the other set of row ends. And again, you guessed it, a corner. You get to the corner. We work another in, in the first stitch here. We can work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then one single crochet in each stitch all the way across the last row that we just completed. And I should have said earlier, but I did finish with the front side facing when I measured my 36 inches. So if you can at all possible, try to end with the front side facing. I think the single crochets look much better that way. So go ahead and finish that round. And then when you finish this, go ahead and make a second 
panel just like it and then I will show you how to put these together and add the finishing touches. At the end of this perimeter round I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the very first single crochet of the round. Let's go ahead and give it a chain, a tug, and clip a generous strand. And so this panel is completed. So now I'm going to make the second panel and then I will show you how these go together and show you the finishing touches. Let me go ahead and give you some numbers here across the top and bottom of the um, of this panel. I have 70 stitches along the row ends. I have 131 single crochets. Now if you worked additional um, rows, I do have 65 rows of arrow stitches. Again, like I said before, that is really irrelevant. The most important thing is that these are crocheted nice and evenly. But for those of you who want the exact numbers according to the gauge, um, those are the numbers, 131 stitches on each side. All right, so let me go ahead and finish my second panel and then I'll show you how to put these together. So what would this look like when you're getting ready to do your seaming? I just wanted to show you what your poncho would look like with the front side facing, but now we want to, to do the slip stitches so that the seam is on the inside. So we've gone ahead and folded that over like this. And again, keep the, the green section or the first rows that you worked up towards the top of the poncho. I, I have a reason for this. And let's go ahead and fold this under. And what you're going to do is set it just like this. And so what you would do is start from this end and work this seam. After you've done that, I'll go ahead and flip this. And you'll have this left on this side. And then we will join again at the bottom and work towards the collar, okay, for that second seam. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like as far as starting the slip stitches, but I wanted to give you the, um, the big overall picture so that you know how to do this. In the written pattern, there is actually a little diagram that will also help explain this. Don't worry about things being a little wonky on the ends just yet because we're going to work um, some finishing rounds that's going to help settle a lot of this out. So now we're ready to join and we're going to, again, starting in those chain two spaces and I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm going to join to that chain two space. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to carefully line up these stitches. I'm going to go through both loops of both panels and we're just going to work a slip stitch. slip stitch. Now make sure that you don't do this too tightly so that the fabric is pulled, pulled, you know, or too tight. If you do, you may want to bump up the size of your hook, but, um, or, or just, you know, try to work a bit. Um, you want it to be tight enough so that it holds the panels together, but you don't want it to be so tight that it kind of deforms the, uh, you know, the, the, the panels as you, as you um, crochet them together. And if you don't like doing this, you can also use a whip stitch with your yarn needle and join them. Although I really think this using this slip stitch is, is probably the best way to go. All right, so I'm going to work this all the way across and I'll show you what it looks like once I get to the chain two of one of the panels. I've worked these slip stitches all the way across until I've come to the last stitch and I'm going to match that up with a stitch here and let me show you there it is so go ahead and do another slip stitch and then we're going to give it a chain and a tug and I'm going to cut a nice long strand let's take a look at this join so notice that has a little bit of flexibility 
It's not particularly tight, but it's not overly loose either. And let's turn it right side out and I'll show you what that looks like. Now you notice that I did use the same color that I used on the perimeter round. You don't have to do it that way. You can just make it interesting with different colors if you choose. I personally think you're going to want to um, manipulate the order of the yarn on these yarn cakes so that you can have a common uh, color um, to use these perimeter rounds and use that same color if at all possible to join them. It'll minimize the look of this um, you know, of the seam quite a bit. And you can tell you really don't see the seam because the colors blend so well. Obviously, if that was a contrasting color, it would be sticking out pretty much. I, and I would, again, just encourage you, use the same color on these perimeter rounds and for joining. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other seam in the same manner. And then I will show you how to begin the ribbing sections. Now that I've got this seamed together, you should have a collar section and the panel, you know, it should kind of look like a poncho. Okay, make sure again that you have the right side facing and you can go ahead and take a look at that seam a little bit better. See how much better this looks. It's, it's the same color, you know, so you're not you know, using a contrasting color here. All right. So now we're going to work along the bottom edge of the poncho and I'm going to show you how to start the bottom ribbing. I'm going to go ahead and start in one of these chain two corners just because I think it'll look better if we do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and join with another, another slip stitch here. I make a slip knot and then I'm going to chain two, one, two, and starting in that first single crochet, I'm going to work a double crochet and I'm going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way around the perimeter of the poncho. Let me make sure you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and work this until I get to the first point or the corner of the poncho and I'll show you what to do once you get to that corner. All right, once you get to the chain two corner, we're going to work a cluster of 10 double crochets in that same space. There's a reason for the madness here. This is because when we come around for other rounds, working the ribbing will not be working increases. So we're going to work all the increases that we need right now. Let me see how many if I've counted. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need four more. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, and let's go ahead. Don't forget I'm going to pull back and don't forget that stitch. We're going back to one stitch in each stitch. Now, let me show you how this looks. It's going to look a little ripply, but you want it to look a little, a little wavy there for now, because as we come around for those other rounds using the ribbing front and back post double crochets, we're not going to be adding any additional stitches here. So this needs to get us through about five, four to five rounds of the ribbing. So after you do that, just continue on with one double crochet in each stitch. And again, when you come to the second corner, there are only two on this round, go ahead and don't forget to work 10 stitches in this chain two space. When you come around to the chain two sections, just work one double crochet in those. Just treat them as you would a stitch. And now when we come to the join, just join to the top of that first stitch of the round. Don't worry about a little bit of a gap there as we continue to work this stitch around that will be minimized. So now we're ready for round two of the ribbing. We're going to chain two. 
Notice I did not turn. I'm just keeping the front side facing us as we work this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work a simple ribbing, which is a front post double crochet in that first stitch, and then a back post. Let's try that one again. Back post double crochet and just a real quick tutorial if you've never worked this before you're working double crochets but instead of going through the top loops you're just working your hook around the body of the stitch like you're giving it a belt for the front post and for the back post we come in the back door the hook goes around the body and out the side door and we just complete our stitches as usual so just don't forget to alternate front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And then again, we're going to join to the top of the first stitch of the round, just like we did. And um, we're going to go ahead and work four additional rounds. So this is round two. So round two, three, four, and five are all worked the same. So go ahead and work those, and then I'll show you what we have. At the end of the fourth round, I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. So instead of five rounds, we're going to just work four. We join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and go ahead and give it a chain and a tug. And let's go ahead and cut that, give it a nice long strand. And I'm going to hide those loose strands using my yarn needle right here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, give a quick tutorial. I like to do this at the end of all my videos, knowing that. There might be somebody out there, this is your first video you've watched. And let's go ahead and do this on the back side. I'm going to go down into the stitch. Just just weave it in to the st stitch if you can get it in there. There we go. And you just want to be careful too with uh, the color changes. You don't, don't want to um, run this into you know stitches where the color has changed, so let's go ahead and um, bring it back around up into this stitch like that. And then I'm going to bring it down into another stitch. Again, I'm just trying to minimize uh, this color spreading into the other colors too much and being a distraction so that it shows as a strand. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think that should be enough. And then what we do is we clip this close. And that should be pretty well hidden. So I'll need to go ahead and do that. And just go ahead and take a look. Isn't that beautiful? I just love the way this ribbing came out with the different colors. Now, if you want to, you can even kind of control the colors. The pattern has extra yarn built into it with the three cakes of yarn, so you should have plenty. Now let's take a look at, okay, at the collar. So what I want you to do for the neckline, don't join at the, at the uh, points where the where the connections are, but I want you to join anywhere else along the um, the single crochets. Now we're ready to begin the collar portion. Notice that I am not starting in the corners that, or, the, or the dips where the connection uh, points are, but I'm going to do it along the side where there are no joins. And since I'm using the brown, because that's more of a complementary color um, around my face than, let's say, the, the yellow is, uh, I'm going to connect it up where there's some brown here so I can try to disguise what I'm doing. And um, let's go ahead and starting in the next stitch, we're going to just work one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the corner. I will show you what to do once we get to that part. Once you get to the joint where there are two stitches, and yes, that chain two space does count as a stitch, so one, two stitches here, and one, two stitches on the other side of the joint, we're gonna work a four stitch double crochet decrease, like so. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do that four times 
that's two and three and four yarn over pull through all five stitches or all five loops on the hook and then continue on working double crochets as you go now when we come back around and work the front and back post stitches let me show you how we're going to do this 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 is going to count as one stitch okay we're not going to do these individually four times you can count the stitches up here this is just going to count as one stitch during those rows or rounds rather so go ahead and work this all the way around and when you get to the other corner work it the same way at the end of round one of the collar section we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round chain two and just like the ribbing that we worked along the bottom we're going to work front post and back post all the way around we're going to work three more rounds so this would be rounds two through four. And when we come to the corner section, let's go ahead and take a look at that again. When we come to the corner section where we work those four stitches together, make sure that when we do the post stitch that we just go around it like this, or if it's a back post, we come around it with the hook like that so that we make one stitch out of out of this stitch. Okay, so go ahead and work those four rounds and then fasten off and hide your loose ends. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the arrow poncho with me today. If you did, please comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.